Hi, I'm Camilla and I'm an engineer. Um, I studied aeronautical engineering at Glasgow Uni and I graduated last year and now I've started working for Siemens Mobility as part of rail infrastructure. Um, so I'm a graduate at Siemens and the project which I'm working on at the moment is Crossrail. So you might have heard of Crossrail as it receives a lot of publicity um, in the media, but if not, it is the new Elizabeth Line, which stretches over 100 kilometres from east to west of London, um, with over 42 kilometres of new tunnels being built and 10 brand new stations, which have been built from scratch as well. Um, so it's a huge project and it's estimated that around 200 million passengers will use Crossrail each year and it will increase the capacity of London's central neural central rail network by 10 percent um, so my my job uh, working on Crossrail is as part of dynamic testing as test engineer so this involves um, the physical running and the testing of the trains and the signaling system on the routes which Crossrail will run on so the purpose of this testing basically is to identify and to fix any bugs which are in the software um, that need to be fixed before we go into the next stage, which is trial running, where we run trains to timetables and schedules. Um, so the, the software which is on board the train, which is um, made by Siemens, um, is... Um, it has automatic train operations, which means that the trains can um, basically drive themselves and stop accurately at platforms without the need for um, a driver to drive the train. Um, so it's a very complex process of designing the system and then testing it very rigorously to um, make sure that it's safe and it runs um, efficiently and reliably. So um, the process starts off with testing just single trains and then we move on to multi-train testing um, before the trial running stage. Um, so usually my working week would consist of around half the week being out on the trains and actually doing physical testing and then the other half of the week we go back and look uh, all the testing which is uh, being conducted and analyse any faults um, and how we can fix them and then update the software accordingly um, for next release. Um, so yeah it's a big goal of the UK rail industry as a whole to make the rail network um, a digital railway um, rather than the, the old school traditional kind of railway system that we have at the moment, it's going to be more, a lot more digital and based on automatic train operation, which makes the whole network um, work a lot faster, be more reliable. And there's not as many faults which need to be fixed. And we can also increase the frequency and capacity of trains as well. So um, for Crossrail, the design process is very lengthy and there are many factors which need to be uh, considered from start to finish, from, from the paper, from the idea on paper to reality, which we're not at yet, but we're nearly there. Um, so a lot of these factors include environmental impact um, and potential constraints which um, it may bring to people who live near where the construction is happening um, or work near where construction is happening um, and other stumbling blocks and constraints which we just come across as the process is going on. Um, so obviously the construction of all the tunnels um, and all the stations and everything that's needed to connect the network is a massive job and we need to consider about the methods and mat materials which we use to construct everything from from the tunnels, trains and stations um, and the best the way that we can best do this to minimise environmental impact um, and 
have the lowest carbon emissions that we can, um, as well as making sure that the whole railway will be reliable and efficient for many, many years to come, because obviously this is a really expensive project and we want it to be have a lot of longevity. Um, so rail is actually the most environmentally friendly um, way of travel um, that's possible, both for um, passengers and also for transporting cargo around. Um, so you may have heard about recently that the government have given the green light on HS2, which is the High Speed Rail 2 project. Um, so this will link nearly half of the UK population um, with its services and um, it's a really it's a big and exciting project but it's very demanding um, but it will provide many many people within the UK with much faster and more reliable journeys um, giving them more options about where they can live and work. Um, so this project will give the UK Rail Network an increased capacity. Um, however, there are a lot of controversial aspects to this project, as you may have heard, including um, the very high costs, um, well, very high development costs um, to design and to build everything. Um, and then also um, potential harmful environmental impacts, such as the wildlife and the habitat, which it may destroy. Um, as well as people's homes and um, where they work. So my idea of a project to you is to consider where in the UK would benefit from a new or improved railway network, um, how you could improve connectivity in some areas of the, new, of the UK um, and how you could do this in the most environmentally friendly way possible with minimum impact to nature, wildlife, the habitats, as well as disruptions to people's lives, um, where they live and work, and as well as considering all the materials and methods which would need to be used to um, design and construct the railway and everything that goes with it, um, and how you could have the lowest carbon emissions during this process. Um, so your ideas can really be as creative or as futuristic as you like. Um, there are so many different um, places that you can take inspiration from. So, for example, from all those super efficient trains that um, we have in mainland Europe or, for example, the bullet trains in Japan. Um, which are environmentally friendly and can carry huge amounts of passengers, um, as well as crazy futuristic concepts such as Hyperloop. So can really be absolutely anything, but just um, think about the ways which it can be, that would impact the environment the least and at the same time bringing as much benefit to as many people as possible. So good luck.